CBS News and great journalism lost a legend when veteran 60 Minutes correspondent Mike Wallace died last month. Yesterday, family and friends and colleagues gathered here in New York to remember him, a touching and funny service. It's hard to believe that Mike is gone. His style, his stories, his questions were all so distinctively Mike. Nobody was ever that good. What are you trying to prove? Nothing. He was doing what? With you. Why? 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 What is this? This is 60 Minutes. Wow. I think he really felt that without a dedicated community of journalists, the world would be a poorer place, that people would be ripped off, that people would be taken advantage of. She lost her virginity that day. Now, why would she say that about you, Father Kirsch, if it were not so? He was driven by his desire to be part of the action and to get to the truth. Oh, I have no intention of leaving until you tell me what's on your mind. He loved being in the spotlight. We gave you in some ways, it was his drug. His very being demanded attention, and it was seldom denied. He was the best journalist I have ever known. He didn't just walk into the famous interview with the Ayatollah Khomeini. He had earned it through years of solid, serious reporting. And he calls you, Imam, forgive me, his words, not mine, a lunatic. I was uncertain whether Mike was the most decent person I ever worked with or the most devious. But that he was probably both, certainly among the most complex <laughs> and without question, the most competitive. It was a story that the, uh, that the correspondents used to tell to each other about if you had a piece on Sunday's show in the lineup and Mike didn't, it was a bad week to go on the road because by the time you got back, Mike's piece would be on the air and yours wouldn't. Now wait just a moment. Hold it a minute, God damn it. Around 60 minutes, he was just like he was in an interview. He drove us all crazy. He made us all think on our feet. He made us all laugh constantly reminded us when we were a few pounds overweight. <laughs> and as someone once said, he had an underdeveloped sense of other people's privacy. <laughs> Can you imagine coming home from a date and Mike Wallace is waiting up for you? Where did you go, he asks. What did you do? How do you explain this hidden camera video? What really gets Andy Rooney worked up? He's about to tell you. Once more. Let's do that again. Once more. Why? Feeling. Why? That was good. And besides the fact that he was a real pain in the ass, you knew deep down that chances were you were never going to have an opportunity to be as close again to someone like Mike. My other next door neighbor at 60 Minutes for all the years he spent there was Ed Bradley. When he interviewed Mike back in 2006, Ed had only months to live. His relationship with Mike, like mine, was bittersweet. And the interview itself, without either man knowing it, was a bittersweet farewell. Just a simple question. I know that there have been periods There's where no there were, such thing there as were a people in the question. shop you didn't talk to. Like you and I didn't talk for a period of six months. Not, the, why? I don't remember. Uh -huh. Do you? As you've said yourself, you hold a grudge. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, I'll miss you. Here's to life, to dreamers and their dreams. The last few years weren't easy for my father, this man with such a keen intellect and such a quick mind began to slip. But as your faculties are stripped away, doctors say that what's left is the essential person. And what remained of Mike Wallace was a sweet and gentle man. Even in his diminished state, there was no one who was more fun to be around. He was still Mike Wallace, and that was still plenty. So long. So uh, touching and loving, Charlie. And you it were there. was most of all what you saw uh, yesterday was people who, in the end, just 
knew that there was something so special, not only about his reporting, but about his personality, and it all came out. Whether it had to do with, his, as uh, Bradley said, a grudge, mm -hmm. or whether it had to do with competition, somehow Mike could do it in a way that made it different. Mm -hmm. I saw his son Chris over the weekend. Number one, looking at him on camera, he looks so much like his dad. And he says that even when you know it's coming, you're still never really prepared. Even when you know, even if he's 93. Near. And even yeah. and he said that mm -hmm. too. Even when he's 93. But what a what a wonderful life! And to go knowing that you were loved, respected, and admired. Um, what a wonderful thing. I cannot well, get enough of looking at those old true. clips. Yeah. Loving it that's and true. learning yeah. from it. Yeah. That was the most amazing thing, is when you have had that much experience in front of a camera, yeah. there is a recording of a lifetime. Brilliant. And a recording, and over the context of a time, you can see the common threads yeah. of the experience of being a master. Yeah. A master. You know, it really is. It's like having a master tape in the art of interviewing and in yes. the art a passion for the story. Yeah, Jeff Figger said it best. It's hard to believe he's gone. There will be nobody. There's nobody like him.